All right, welcome to Bite Size Chemistry, where we take big science topics and we break them down to tiny little digestible chunks. Today, we're going to be talking about Boyle's Law. It's one of the first gas laws. And Boyle's Law is a law that relates pressure and volume. This is what's called an indirect or inverse relationship, meaning that if pressure increases, volume decreases, and vice versa. If volume increases, pressure decreases. Okay. Boyle's law can be described in the following equation. P1 times V1 equals P2 times V2, all right? With P being your pressure units and V being your volume units. It's important to note that your pressure units, let's do P, must be in same units. And volume, or V, must be in same units. So we're going to use, use quotations to say the same thing. So I point that out because sometimes you might need to convert one of your pressures or one of your uh, volumes in order to get them to be the same. If you don't ensure that both your pressure and volumes are in the same units, for example, both pressures in ATM, both volumes in liters, then you'll get the wrong answer. Fortunately for us, we don't have to worry about that in this example. So we're going to work through a word problem. And anytime you're scouring through a word problem and you notice that you're only given pressure and volume units, then you know you're going to be using Boyle's Law. And so then it's helpful to write the Boyle's Law equation and then down one side of your paper, write out your variables. So I know Boyle's Law has a P1, a V1, a P2, and a V2. And for all these gas law equations, um, Boyle's, Charles, Guy, Lussacs, you're always going to be given three of your four variables. And then you just solve for the missing. So Maria is inflating a balloon for a science experiment. Initially, the balloon has a volume of 3.5 liters. So we're going to put that 3.5 in as our V1. When the pressure is 1.2 atm. So when pressure is at 1.2 atm, I have a volume of 3.5 liters. She squeezes the balloon, increasing the pressure to 2.4 atm. Assuming that the temperature remains constant, what is the new volume? So I don't know what V2 is, so I'm gonna put a question mark there. I'm also gonna call it X. So I can just change that and put X, because that's my unknown. Now the easiest way to solve these equations is to just take your variables and plug them directly into the equation. So for example, my P1 is 1.2 times my V1, which is 3.5, and that's gonna equal 2.4 times X. Now the reason I put them in parentheses is so it looks more like a math equation. And so you can see that these two values, the 1.2 and 3.5 are multiplied together, and the 2.4 and the X are multiplied together. Now you're just gonna combine your values on either side. So 1.2 times 3.5 is going to equal, get my calculator out here, times 3.5 equals 4.2. And that 4.2 is going to equal 2.4 times x. Okay? Now, we have to get this x by itself. And in order to do that, we need to do the opposite equation for what it's what's going on right now. So you'll notice that 2.4 is multiplied to x. So to get x by itself, we gotta do the opposite of multiplication, which is division. If we want x to be by itself, we need to divide um, this right side by 2.4. In algebra, whatever we do to the right side, we do to the left side. So now my equation should look like this. 4.2 divided by 2.4 equals x because 2.4 divided by 2.4 is 1. And now we just do the math, right? 4.2 divided by 2.4 means that x equals 1.75. Because I'm looking for v2, this 1.75 is going to be my v2. And since my initial volume was in liters, my final volume is in liters. So your answer for this equation is 1.75 liters. Notice how because I increased the pressure on my P2, my volume got smaller, right? And that's why this is an indirect relationship. All right, see you next time for another gas law.